You are listening to New Music Monday on Wickham Sound. I'm Rebecca, and now I am joined by somebody who you might recognise from The X Factor, or you might recognise her from girl band Neon Jungle, or if you are into kids' TV, and I'm not going to lie, if I'm up early enough on a Saturday, then I love a bit of kids' TV, you might have heard her voice on CBBC's Saturday Mashup, because I am joined now by Shireen. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Hey, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am good. Thank you so much for joining me today. I can't wait to chat to you. No, thanks for having me on. I've been excited about it. Oh, good. Um, you're in London at the moment. Yeah, sweating it out. Yeah, the hottest we... day I actually fell <laughs> down and it was a night it was literally a nightmare. I thought out of all the days to travel to London, why did it have to be today? It was honestly dreadful. Did but you... I made it and I'm still <laughs> Did you come on the train? Yeah, I came on a train and like all like there was loads of trains cancelled and like everyone was packed onto the one train. It was like a oh, horrible sweaty sardines. Not not oh, great. <laughs> I bet. Did they have aircon though? Yeah, actually, do you know what? When I was near to London, it was actually freezing. So it went from being really, really hot to um like obviously the aircon was just blasting and I was only in like little shorts and a crop top. <laughs> so by the end of it I was freezing. Yeah. So it was kind of like a roller coaster of emotions for me. <laughs> Bless you, but you made it, you survived. So, Shireen, in your career so far, you've been quite busy, but I just want to rewind. Let's go back to the beginning, back to the early days. How did it all start for you? Um, So, I've been brought up in, like, a really musical family. So, ever since I was a little girl, like, I mean, five, six years old, I always used to watch my dad singing. And um, he used to do band rehearsals of his brothers and sisters so I used to sneak into the band rehearsals and always said like oh, I really want to do that and that's when my first inspiration of music began um, and then eventually my dad started bringing me into rehearsals and he taught me you know how to like listen to harmonies and you know I actually well my first ever band I was in which no one knows about was a band called Unique um, which is, makes me cringe so much that we were called Unique because <laughs> we were like well, I guess we were so not unique anyway, but um, <laughs> done kind of like old school soul stuff, um, like that Dion Warwick and Diana Ross and all that kind of stuff. And um, yeah, we just kind of started going to auditions to London, which led me on to my first ever work experience in a, a record label for Sony. So I, every, I used to kind of be the runner and I would make teas and coffees for all the artists that come in. And then on one day on the Thursday, I would get to write. And that was kind of my opening into into like the, the industry. And from there, I got signed at Neon Jungle. Oh, amazing. And there's the rest is history, really. Yeah. And you mentioned coming from a musical family. And obviously, when you were on The X Factor, you were in a band with your brothers. So yeah. what was that experience like? A, just being on The X Factor and B, getting to do it with your family. Oh, it was incredible because, you know, as I said, my dad was in a, a family band as well. So it really felt like we were just kind of following the footsteps of our father. And, you know, there's no better feeling than being up on stage of your brothers. Like one one thing was like when we went on to The X Factor, we were kind of doing like R&B and soul. And then it was kind of changed to like doing pop. So that was like a whole experience within itself. But, you know, there's no better feeling than being on stage and looking to left and right and, and seeing your family there and seeing everyone vibing and being like, wow, this is this is just mental. Yeah, um, but yeah, the whole experience was really fun. It was dead um, full on. So we had songs that would get changed the night before and then you're thinking to yourself, oh, I don't even know these lyrics for this song. I need to sing it to millions of people. So it was kind of like, yeah, we need to wing this big time. <laughs> that would <laughs> stress the song me out. Get changed. Yeah. I mean, the songs would get changed left, right and centre. So it was like a lot of pressure, but we enjoy working under pressure um, and I think whenever you're put outside your comfort zone there's always room to grow. Yeah do you think it was easier having your brothers by your side kind of like a comfort blanket during those stressful times? Oh, yeah. I mean 100% we were known as like the the naughty Scots basically when we <laughs> back to house because um, well we love a baby in Scotland <laughs> so we were the room always like snuck in alcohol I used to like yeah we actually had bunk beds it was like we were in like kids again so we used to sneak the, the alcohol and put it behind the beds and everyone from the, the X Factor house would come into our room for like, <laughs> like the drink and, and the party but you know that was great I feel like if I was doing it myself or if my brothers were doing it themselves it would have been a lot more I guess just lonely we would have still had a, a good time but mm-hmm. having you know your family there just makes it so much better and we're such a tight-knit family as well we're like best mates without being cheesy oh, <laughs> I mean that was <laughs> no that's lovely I I always say me and my brother I mean he'd probably disagree but I always say me and my brother are really good mates <laughs> it's the best thing you know being from like a, a tight family because even me like I've got like kind of one close friend but 
if I go out to the clubs and stuff, I just go out with my family. I don't yeah. a lot of people think it's weird, like, oh, you're going out clubbing with your brothers. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, no, that's what I used to do. Me and my brother, because my brother's two years older than me. So we used to, if we were going out, we would have pre-drinks at our house. It would be my friends, yeah. his friends, all just go out. They were the best times, best memories. <laughs> I've got a little bit of a savage question for you now, though. Think of your time on The X Factor. Go back to the audition right. stages. If Simon Cowell had said to you, look, Shireen, we love you. We think you're sick. We want you to go through to the next round, but you can't take your brothers with you. Would you have <laughs> binned your brothers or would you stay loyal? Nah, I would have stayed with my brothers. <laughs> Actually, funny you said that because Sharon um, Osborne basically said that. <gasps> um, no way. Um, and I had just said to her, like, I can't even remember what my exact words was, but I was just like, oh, you know, thanks for, you know, your opinion and that. But, you know, this thanks, is how we... no thanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're a better person than I am, because I think I would have been my brother. <laughs> they love a little story like that, though, in X Factor, don't they? They, they love do. Like, drama. <laughs> yeah, the sob story. They love it. Um, so we mentioned Neon Jungle earlier. So you've gone from a girl band of four then your brothers you did x factor with your brothers so there's three of you trio you duet yeah. sometimes online with jamal from raksu so that's yeah. two and now you're releasing solo music so you've done four three two one <laughs> how <No one's> ever... <laughs> <laughs> how does being solo how does going solo releasing solo music how does that compare to having people by your side oh it's a it's a bit of a um i don't know it's it's, it's... I say it's got like its ups and downs because for me, like I've wanted to release solo music since I was 15. So that's 10 years ago, I'm 25 now. So I was just, I was thinking to myself, right, I'm getting a few gray hairs out. Like if I don't do this now, like where am I actually <laughs> going to do it? So it felt like really like a weight lifted off my shoulder when I was like dropped my shoulders. I mean, as if I've got one shoulder. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my first single relapse because it, it was like such a long time coming for me to actually be releasing solo music and um when I was in Neon Jungle I always wanted to do that but we couldn't really do it because um obviously we're signed to like Sony and because we didn't really know each other I don't think we really had that relationship to begin with whereas with my brothers because we're family we you know we know it's all love and also there's certain things that I might want to talk about that I wouldn't talk about when I'm in a family band <laughs> yeah. and it's the um, so you know they're kind of releasing other music that's that's the same kind of vibe as well so um it feels really good to have like the creative um I guess just to be creative in a whole different kind of genre and say things that that's on my mind and just kind of yeah just be be free with it all um but there's not there's, as I said there's no better feeling than being on stage with my brothers because I've done solo gigs as well and it's great and I love that feeling but when you're with your family, it's just like, I don't know, I just feel like I've accomplished something great in life. And I'm oh, the stage I with... love that. Like you're all going together. You're all doing it together. Yeah. You still make music with your brothers though, don't you? Yeah, so we're still doing gigs and stuff as well. And we've got some uh, scheduled releases to come out too. So we were, we were at Edinburgh Pride recently, which was dope. Um, but yeah, it just feels like, you know, like we're, we're following the footsteps of my dad and... Um, yeah, it just feel, it feels amazing. But like to be actually releasing my solo stuff now, it's a huge weight off my shoulders. I've got so much lined up in the pipeline that I just can't wait to get out. Exciting. Well, I can't wait for that. And you've kind of got the best of both worlds going on then at the minute. Yeah, for real. Yeah, right. So the next question I want to ask you is something that I've asked all of my previous guests. I am big into manifesting, visualization, yeah. speaking things into the universe. So my question for you is, if you could pick one person, who would your dream collaboration be? Ooh, a oh, one person. Um, what, dead or alive or? Alive, let's go alive. Because then if it happens, I can take the credit for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you know what? I'd love to do a collaboration with, oh, there's, two, there's so many. If I can only pick one, pick I guess. Two. I'll let maybe... you pick two. Okay, Drake and... Yeah. Rihanna, if she ever releases anything ever again, because <laughs> we were all waiting. <laughs> oh my God. Shireen, maybe you can give her a kick up the bum, say, look, here's a song, let's do it together, let's put it out. I could see that I mean, happening. I think that's I probably... Think... I'll try. <laughs> yeah. I think that's probably the best one we've had yet. Drake and Rihanna. Well, that would be dope. when it does happen, I want tickets to that show, please. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> VIP. <laughs> oh my God. That would be a dream. Right, to talk about what we're actually here to talk about, Love Us to Strangers, congratulations, your new release. How does it feel to have your music out there and have people sharing it and listening to it? Oh, it's amazing because 
I always say like when you're writing music, it's like you're releasing your personal feelings and emotion, emotions of that time. So it's kind of like a real kind of vulnerable process, especially when I'm doing these kind of sad girl pop <laughs> anthem tunes. Um, and, you know, for me, that was kind of about a previous relationship I was in. So I was like, oh, my gosh, what if he even sees this? Um, but, yeah, when I'm actually seeing people sharing it and connecting to the song and it's helping them for their relationships, it just makes me think that, you know, I've done the right thing. I'm putting it out. Oh, amazing. If you haven't heard the song, it is going to be my track of the week this week. So I'm going to play it shortly. But before that, in honour of the song, I would like to play a little game with you, Shireen. Are you up for it? Yeah, of course. Yeah. OK, so the game, I've called it Lovers to Strangers to match the song. <laughs> Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read out a list of celebrity couples yeah. That were lovers and are now strangers, okay? So they're not together anymore, aka didn't work out, they're exes. Yeah. Some of the couples that I'm going to read out are genuine, they really did date. Some of them I have completely made up. They've always been strangers. Oh, they've never been <laughs> together, okay? So you've all you've got to do is just tell me which ones you think were real couples and which ones you think are fake. Does that make right. sense? Right, perfect. I, I think I'm going to be terrible at this, but I'll give it my best. I don't know. <laughs> I think you'll surprise yourself. I've played this at home with my partner and he surprised himself. Some of them are a bit <laughs> wild, but I think you'll be all right. If you are listening oh. to this live, you can play along as well. If you head to my Instagram at Rebecca Daniels underscore, I've got all the questions up there. So you can just have a little click, play along, see how you do and see if you can beat Shireen. Shireen, do you think they're going to beat you? Um, I don't sound too confident because I'm going to say yes. Yeah. <laughs> Probably will. No, but... you got to back yourself. Come on, Shireen, you got this. I'll give it a bash. <laughs> right, okay. First couple, couple number one. Sandra Bullock and Ryan Gosling. Were they a real couple or did I make them up? Oh, I think they were in a movie together and you get a lot of love from movies. So I'm going to say real couple. You are correct. They were yeah. a real couple. Okay, couple number two. Macaulay Culkin, so Home Alone Kid. And yeah. Mila Kunis. Nah, surely not. Surely not. I mean, In fact, oh. yeah, they were a couple, oh. Shireen. How wild is that? Wow. When Jeez. I first read that, I was like, no, no <laughs> way on earth were they together. No, nope, they were together. Okay, couple number three. Ariana Grande and Brooklyn Beckham. Hmm. I think that is false. You would be correct. It's false. Yeah. However, I feel like... If I could set them up, I feel like that would be a good match. Yeah, I feel like they would match, but I always, think, I don't know. I think Brooklyn Beckham's. I'm, I think feel like he's still twelve year old, but I guess he's. I, I think I guess he's grown. <laughs> yeah, he has grown. To be fair, he looks Boy. exactly like his dad. I think you'd get him confused yeah, he... now. <laughs> um, okay, couple number four: Fergie, Black Eyed Peas, Fergie, and Justin Timberlake. True. True. Did you know that? Yeah. No, I didn't. I'm just guessing here no, at this point. <laughs> I didn't know that. But yeah, apparently, I think like way back in the 90s, he was, I mean, way back. It actually is way back. And that scares me because that's when I was born. <laughs> but um, yeah, they were a couple. Apparently it didn't last long. Um, couple number five, Kim Kardashian. Now she's had a lot of partners. Yeah. Was Busta Rhymes one of them? No. I watched the <laughs> video on Instagram every day and he wasn't on it so <laughs> no he's not oh that makes me sad kind of that there's so many timelines of her <laughs> romantic partners um I know right make it on, onto the list <laughs> I mean I wouldn't be surprised if Buster Rhymes was one of them because I feel like she does like a rapper doesn't she um right okay Cher I was gonna do a Cher impression then but no absolutely oh, not <laughs> Cher and Tom Cruise mmm I want to say no, but I'd let, I feel like they would be quite a cute couple. I'm going to say yes. <gasps> yes. Oh, was I right? No, yes. you're right, they were. But that's shocking to me. Cher <laughs> and Tom Cruise. Yeah, what? Like, what's the age gap between, between them? I think there's quite a... Quite I don't a... even know. I don't know how old Cher is. I feel like she's <laughs> just going to live forever, to be honest. I mean, she looks great, but she's she old. She does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, they were together apparently, I think in the 80s. And she said in an oh. interview that Tom Cruise was one of, one of her top five lovers. And good things come in small packages, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, next couple, Jennifer Lopez and P. Diddy. Uh, true. True. They were a power couple in the 90s. I feel like maybe she should have revisited P. Diddy and not Ben Affleck, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. they're married now, so it's a bit too late. Um, okay, last one. 
Simon Cowell and Kylie Minogue. Hmm. I have no clue who Simon's gone out with or who has been out with, but I, I think that might be false. It is false. He did date it Danny, false? though. Danny Minogue. He went out with Danny oh, really? Minogue. I thought you were going to say I have no idea who Simon Cowell is, and I was like, wait. <laughs> <laughs> he was on the X Factor, isn't he? No, I, I just, I, no, I, don't, I don't really know his. Um, I know he's quarter Scottish, um, and that's about it. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that. Learn something new every day. Yeah. Well, like Shireen, so I think you smashed that. Let's see, you got that one right, that one wrong, right, right, right. You got them all right apart from one. Seven yeah. out of eight right. You deserve a round of applause. I think you smashed it. Shireen, you have been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I did, I, and I love that game. I'm going to have to, I might, I'll give you copyrights, obviously, but I might have to use <laughs> Credit me and you fight. use it wherever you want. <laughs> just before we go, um, just tell everybody, what can we expect to see from you next? So I've literally just dropped another song as well called Breathing, which is a dance um, single. And that's kind of going to be my step into the dance world as well. So... I've got a lot of dance music coming out. Of course, my sad girl anthems as well are going to still be on the way. Some music videos that are scheduled. And apart from that, I'm just going to be gigging around. You might see me on some uh, your TV screens as well, because I've got some acting gigs that I've been doing. Um, and yeah, just I think you'll see my face and my name a lot more. So hopefully don't get annoyed. <laughs> no, not at all. We can't wait. We want more of you, Shireen. Thank you so much. You've been amazing. Yeah, we went from love.